Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Tammy, the Fib Tammy Marshall, the Fibonacci Princess, and uh, this is my presentation on the introduction to symmetry. Now, I decided to just stick with symmetry when it comes to Fibonacci. Um, I will show you some examples later that include some retracements and extensions, but I was kind of just doing my own little overview of what other people have already gone over, and I saw a lot of Fibonacci and uh, retracements and extensions. So I decided to focus on symmetry, which is, are the red 100% lines, and that's what you're going to learn about here in just a minute. But, um, And I'm going to let you know the different ways we use symmetry in order to control risk with a trading plan. Uh, thank you for being part of my presentation. Uh, during my career, I've coached many people, and I know this will be a very eye-opening process for you. You may be familiar with some of the material, but I'll try to show you new concepts and ideas to take your trading to the next level. My goal is to make your trading life easier and, of course, more profitable. I, what I love about Fibonacci work is that it is a great tool to use along with other tools or indicators you do already use in your trading plan. Who am I? Um, I initially became interested in learning to trade for my husband in 2010. He's been trading for over 35 years. I don't know. Some of you on here might actually know who he is. His name is Bruce Marshall. Um, he has a service called Bias that he uh, teaches people how to trade. And um, he would show me options strategies. Before this, I was a special ed teacher for 15 years. <laughs> uh, so he started teaching me how to trade. And uh, in 2014, I met Carolyn on a trip to the Grand Caymans. Carolyn Baroden is the Fibonacci queen. And at the time, she was looking for someone to mentor and train in her room. And for then, from then on, she's been training me in Fibonacci analysis. And now we're more like business partners uh, because, um, you know, she's she's got me fully trained at this point. We're actually training another person now. So uh, my goal is to teach you how to trade more accurately, okay, using specific entries and exits. When I started learning how to trade – Back in 2010, my husband does a lot of uses a lot of fundamentals, and I was like, "Oh gosh, I don't want to have to watch this news program and read that paper and all, you know, uh, look at this company and what's going on with them." So when I met Carolyn and she showed me what she did with the technical analysis, that's when a light bulb went off, and I said, "Hey, this is how I want to learn how to trade." Okay, and because I wanted specific entries and exits based on specific numbers and risk, okay? And my charts focus on the numbers derived from the Fibonacci sequence that help you design the right setup, whether you're trading stocks, options, or futures. And if you'd like to be more consistent in your trading and have defined zones, you know, defined risk, which is what we're all looking for, come visit the Fibonacci market and stocks room at Elliott Wave Trader. That's where uh, Carolyn and I both work. Market prediction. Do you think looking at prior swings in the market may be a good way of predicting what moves may happen in the future? And if you do, you are on to something. It's called symmetry. Some of you may have heard of symmetry before. If you have, let me know in the chat. Um, or if you're familiar with Carolyn, also let me know in the chat. If, if you know who I am, let me know that too. <laughs> um, but symmetry has been used for a very long time by market masters, and it's commonly known as the measured move. So basically what we do is we look at previous swing swings, and we say this is where the market may stop, which is resistance, or this is where the market may hold, which would be your support. I see symmetry every day, okay, that I'm running charts. Uh, Monday through Friday, or if I decide to trade futures on a Sunday, I see it every every day, Monday, uh, monthly, weekly, daily, and intraday, okay? Um, and of course, intraday is your minute time frames, right? At live, I run 10-minute and 120-minute charts in Elliott Wave Trader. Uh, I'll show you later the live screens that I keep up at Elliott Wave Trader, uh, just so that you could see what our service looks like. And what can symmetry do for your trading plan? Well, if you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail, right? Yes, time cycles too. I also do time. Yes, I do do time. You are correct. Uh, today, I'm just talking about uh, symmetry and price, but I do use symmetry for time also. So I will say not only do we have price here, we also have timing. 
Yes, thank you for asking. That was a fantastic question. Uh, you must have a trading plan, okay? If you do not have a trading plan, please stop trading and come up with a trading plan and, you know, use it, work on it. Uh, if you don't have a trading plan, you really need to join an education room and start finding out what other people do. Uh, symmetry is an extremely powerful tool for your trading plan. And this is what I tell a lot of people is, you know, use our work to tell you where you're going to enter or exit and then use some other indicators to tell you other things. You know, like this, is, this, this one has got, you know, you can use a squeeze, you can use, there's a lot of different, I don't want to start talking about indicators right now, but there are several different ones I use along with this work that help me to say, okay, it looks this, it looks more like that this, uh, this zone is going to hold. Symmetry is also known as price projections. Okay. It's the comparison of swings in the same direction and how those swings are similar or equal. And I've got some examples I'm going to show you. So don't get too confused with the wording. And uh, on that note, I also want to tell you, you do not need to know how Fibonacci work works in order to be in our room. You just need to show up and we will tell you what to do. We'll teach you how to use our work. You also don't need to know what the numbers mean. We'll go over that with you also. I will do as much hand holding with you as necessary in order for you to understand the work that is in front of you and how to use it. Because I understand when you first look at it, it does look quite confusing. So here is a great example of an actual setup that I had. Okay, everything I show you are actual setups that I had. Um, not just stuff I came up with, but actual setups. This is SPX Cash Daily. And um, we had a, a nice bounce on the 26th of June earlier this year. Some of these are from this year. Some of them are from maybe not last year, but I, I did try to get examples from this year. I have examples every day, but um, some of the more popular stuff is what I was looking for. Um, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five swings that were similar. The first one. From the 15th of November 2022 that's I can go really far back and look for swings if I want to um, that one was $122.30 what I do is I go from that high at the 15th of November I click on it I have a three-pointed tool I'll show you what it looks like in a minute but I go I click high low of 17th of November and then I click the more recent high that I'm trying to project from okay so this was when we were having a pullback after the 16th of June, and I'm looking at where we may get the bounce. So high, low, high, okay? And you can see price-wise, these swings are similar, right? High, low, high. That one was 125.33. The one from 17th of January is 129.85. The one from the 22nd of March, 130.33. And the one from the 18th of April was 120.13. Now, I um, I run SPX Cash Monday through Friday. I really keep a close eye on it. I do time and price on SPX Cash. I also do NASDAQ Cash. Um, my husband trades SPX Cash almost daily. So I really keep a close eye on it. So if you are in the room um, and you, you are trading SPX Cash, I strongly encourage you to come join our room at Elliott Wave Trader. Um, so I do the same thing with these other ones, high, low to the more recent high. I always go back to the more recent high, high, low to the more recent high, high, low to the more recent high, and then high, low to the more recent high. Then I showed you what the swing actually was. It ended up being 120.39. So it was a little bit closer to those swings from the 18th of April and the 15th of November. But this was the actual entire setup zone, 43.18 to 28. You would say, how do I trade this? Well, you put your stop just underneath there. And if you go through 48, 43.18, then guess what? That's it. It didn't work. They don't always work, right? <laughs> So, and how do you know to get into the trade? Like I said earlier, you can use indicators. You also could use something called a trigger, which are moving average crossovers. 
but I would assume that most of you kind of already have your way of, uh, of looking at these trades and, uh, you know, using different indicators. So like I said, this is another good way for you to have confirmation of the trade that you are doing. Uh, with symmetry, one level is enough for a setup. Okay, so if you've watched other educators in this series, um, and I've watched clips of different videos, I haven't had the opportunity to watch entire videos yet, but I have noticed, you know, different people talk about a single piece of retracement or a single piece of extension, and they may trade off of that. What the Fibonacci queen has taught me and the way that we trade is symmetry, which are the red 100% lines, are the only ones that we use by themselves for a trade. So one level is enough for a setup. But sometimes we do... We do um, use retracements and extensions along with symmetry. That's a cluster. I'm going to talk more about that later. But with symmetry, one level is enough for a setup, okay? But n a lot of times, more will overlap, right? So let me uh, actually click back to this slide. That's This is an example of where you had a lot of swings that overlapped, and there were probably even more in there, okay? You can see how much symmetry is in this whole chart just by looking at it with your eyes, right? Um, because there are always similar swings. Symmetry helps. Do you use rectangles for symmetry? Uh, I do not. I, I do not do that, and I am not familiar with that, but it is something on my list because I've been hearing about Fibonacci circles and rectangles and uh, different things that I'm actually not familiar with. And the reason I'm not familiar with it is because um, um, I, Carolyn doesn't do it. So, you know, a lot of what I've learned is through Carolyn, but uh, she's getting pretty close to retiring. And uh, I'm what I would call the, more the beginning of my career. Sorry, let me take a second. So I am uh, very interested in learning more and more and more. So uh, I don't know what rectangles for symmetry is, but I am uh, I am interested in learning more about that. Um, as far as because uh, uh, the guys from Elliott Wave Trader, something they were telling me is that they noticed that uh, they the Elliott Wave work works really well with I think they said Fibonacci circles or something, and that's something I'm not familiar with, and uh, I want to talk to Rich and Avi more about that. Avi was the one telling me, so. I'm 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 the type that wants to know it all. So <laughs> I'm gonna do my best, which that's the great thing about trading, right? You can never know it all. Uh, it's 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 the great uh, it's it's hard to master as far as knowing what all is out there. So um, it's a great place for me to be. <laughs> as far as symmetry, um, it helps to determine the trend of the market. Uh, resistance, which is going to be above price action, would suggest a bearish trend. And support, which is going to be below the price action, would suggest a bullish trend, right? Resistance is what we're going to sell against. And support is what you're going to buy against. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. You said your best tool we would learn from you. Yeah, I mean, I, that's that's why I'm always interested in learning more and more because I'm, you know, I, we're all trying to constantly refine our trading game, right? So, <laughs> uh, symmetry can be used to determine where a move may terminate. If you're near or past extensions, and I'm going to explain this in just a minute. So, we use extensions to tell us where the targets are. So, you've entered the trade, and we say if we don't have any resistance on the way up, we give you these green targets, and we say this is where the move may, you know, this is where you want to target and, you know, take your profits but if we get past those targets we'll start doing something called symmetrical pro projections but we only use this to trail up our stops not for trade setups because it's counter trend and let me show you what I mean I left the moving averages on this chart because I wanted to explain to you what I mean by counter trend okay so I at this point on this apple chart we were past the high-low target extensions, which are the green numbers. 
Okay. So I took the previous swing of $12 and 83 cents. And I, that is uh, from the low of July 26th. Okay. And I did something called projecting it. So I did low high to the low of the 9th of August. Okay. See how similar those moves are $12.83, $12.90. And I got that symmetrical projection, that red 100%, that symmetry. Previous swings in the market are similar. Low, high to this low gives me that resistance at 176.08. And look what happened. It completely fell apart against uh, after that. Now, what I mean by this would be a counter trend trade. Price action at this point is above the 200 moving day average. That's the pink dotted line. Price action is above the green 50 moving day average. Okay, these are both simple SMAs. Now for the 5 and the 13, those are EMAs. The blue 5 is above the red 13. So all of these moving averages are on the side of the bulls. So I wouldn't say to somebody short against that 176. I would just say if you're already bullish, trail up your stops because we the move could t terminate there. And whoa, did it, right? Um, pretty big decline. And I, I don't know if y'all remember that 13th of October, 2022, but that was a low for a lot of things for a while. I just remember saying it over and over again in my videos. The 13th of August was the low. Um, so I can't believe that was almost a year ago, but um, so this is where I'd want you to trail up your stops if we're already past extensions. So that's a really good tool to be able to have. How to find symmetry. We use a three pointed tool to measure from high to low to high to find support. Okay, that's what I showed you on the SPX cash example. And then how to find it for resistance. We do low, high to low. That's what I just showed you on the Apple exam example. Symmetry, Fibonacci price projections. Okay, for possible resistance, I go from a low to a high to a low. That's what I was just telling you on Apple for support on SPX cash, high, low to the high. We use the 100% almost all the time, but every now and then I'll use the 1.618 if we've gone through all the 100%. But I would say 98% of the time we use the 100%. I already went over this symmetry for support, high, low, high. Here is Amazon, okay? This was an actual setup I had in Amazon in June, June 6th. It's my birthday. June 6th, I projected from that high these previous swings. The high from 22nd of February was to the low of 2nd of March is $6.62. The high from the 4th of April to the low of the 12th of April, $6.49. The high from the 24th of April to the low of the 25th of April, $6.78. High, low to the more recent high on the 6th of June. And that's what gives us this nice setup area. What do you do? It's about 12121. Put your stop just underneath that. If it busts it, you have a minimal loss, right? We had a nice rally on Amazon after that. Sorry, guys, at this point in the day, I've already done a couple of pre pre presentations uh, as part of my daily job. So my throat is starting to get dry. Um, as far as uh, uh, sell H is concerned, this is actually something I own myself for my uh, daughter's accounts. So um, I uh, keep a close eye on this one. And uh, I actually bought it around $10. So that was pretty awesome a while back. Uh, now it's, it's all, all the way up to, what, over $200. Um, but I, I keep a close eye on this one. And it was also a request that a client wanted to see. I do chart requests. That's another thing that I do that's pretty awesome is on Mondays and Wednesdays, you are allowed to request any chart you want. And I run it for you in the Elliott Wave Trader Room for the Fibonacci Markets and Stocks. So that is a pretty awesome uh, plus benefit 
to our service. Um, as far as cell H is concerned, same story, $16.55 from the 2nd of March, from the 18th of May, $16.18, from the 31st of July, $16.75, projected from the 15th of August high. That gives you that nice setup zone, 166, 168 or so. Okay, nice risk is defined. Okay, I just looked at this chart yesterday. So that was what it was all the way up to from yesterday. Y'all, this is like a little drink company. I mean, I can't believe they're over $200, but what a nice way to get into a stock that is going straight up, right? Think about that for a minute. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I love this work. It's just awesome. Uh, as far as NVIDIA Daily is concerned, uh, this is a very recent setup that I did in July. <clears throat> I used some of these previous swings in the market to give us that setup zone, okay, that hit and held on the 14th of August. Okay, so this would have been a nice uh, run into earnings trade too, right? <laughs> Now, what I tell you with earnings is that our work is a crapshoot. Uh, what, what that means is earnings can make a stock go either way. So don't uh, use our work the night before the day before earnings as risk. You can use it as risk for an entrance to a trade and earnings are two or three weeks later. That's fine. But don't use it the week of earnings and think that a level of support is going to hold through earnings if they have bad earnings or if they have good earnings and get a bad uh, report or downgraded. So as far as NVIDIA daily is concerned, I had that swing from the 12th of January for $79.45, one couple from August, one for 84.61 and one for 83.51. All three of those swings projected from the high from the 14th of July. Okay, high, low to the more recent high, high, low to the more recent high, high, low to the more recent high, gives us our setup zone about 396 to 401. And that ended up being a super nice trade and at the first target on the upside, beautiful. Uh, this is Melly. Um, this is just yet another example of symmetry um, for support, high, low, that swing was $211.14, projected from the more recent high on the 10th of August. This was a chart request in my room. Someone asked me for this chart, bought at support. Now guess what they're asking me for? They're asking me for resistance. They're asking me where the move might stop. So that's what I gave them today. I gave there all the way, we're all the way up to this target extension. And they were like, can you give me some symmetrical projections to tell me where else it might stop? Because that next target extension is pretty far up there at 1516. So uh, that's what I did. That was one of the chart requests I did today. So symmetry for resistance, where we're going to want to short the market, right? Where we're going to, where, and we only want to short the market if the moving averages are on the side of the bears. Okay. Now you can do counter trend trades. I had a counter trend trade in Amazon. I can't remember what it was. I feel like it was earlier this year, but it was beautiful. It worked out really, really nice. Amazon was straight up. I made some symmetrical projections and uh, I said, hey, if it goes through this, then I just have a minimal loss. But I and my husband did it also. So you can do counter trend trades with our work as long as you're already making money with trend trades. Okay. So here is a great example of Tesla from last year. As some of these are from last year. This one is from last year. Okay, I had a symmetrical projection. I mean, a, I had a swing from the 21st of December low to the 4th of January high. It was $107.30. Then I projected it from the low of the 24th of May. Okay, what is this? A pattern of Lower highs and lower lows. We're going down, 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 down. I even had one, if you can see this little swing here, I projected that low to that high from this low and we failed from that. I remember that's, that one also. That was another one I had. 
Okay. So that's what I do. I look at the prior swings when we're going down and I project them from the more recent low to say this is where this move may stop. Now, look at this. How many times? One, two, three, four, five times. And then it finally continued on down there. Decline of $211. Uh, this is Carnival Cruise Lines. Now, the reason this is very recent, the reason I've been keeping an eye on uh, Carnival Cruise Lines is because uh, uh, my husband's got some trades in it. So um, this I thought was a fantastic example of where I was worried that it was the, the zone, the bullish zone I had was not going to hold because I didn't think it was going to get through this resistance. And what happened? It did not get through that resistance, right? We had one, two, three swings that were similar. Um, to, and I projected them from the low of the 18th of August. And then we made that deeper downside correction. So what am I going to do now once we start getting enough of a bounce? I'll I will set it back up from that more recent low. Because until we start getting through this resistance, I'm not going to feel good about any support I have, right? That's what's great about this work. You may have some support, but guess what? If you have overhead resistance, you need to look for uh, you to get through some of that resistance before you start feeling more confident about the trade. As far as FedEx, here is another example of resistance, right? had a low at 14th of July to the high of 25th of July. That move was $20.17. Low from the 26th of July to the first of uh, high of 1st of August, $18.63. Low from the 9th of August to the high of 16th of August, $18.04. And I projected them from the 7th of September, low, high to the more recent low to give me this setup zone, 214 to 217. And that was a nice short setup there, decline of 70, almost $74. TSEM. Now, I wanted to show you this example. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I'll get that to your, uh, to the, about the ES. Yes, I would love to go over that, absolutely. Uh, somebody just asked about the ES dropping this week, and uh, yes, I I. I will definitely get to that. This is TSEM. Now, this is a recent chart request from the, uh, let's see, it was from Tuesday. I do the chart chart request on Tuesday, Thursday, if the market is closed Monday instead of Monday, Wednesday. So I do on Tuesday, Thursday day. And um, this person was asking me about, um, sorry about that, was asking me about, uh, if they should buy this stock because it's pretty cheap and it's come way, way, way down. I was, was like, absolutely not. N not until you get some of the, through some of this resistance on the way up. We're below the 200. We're below the 50 and the five is below the 13. Okay, all of the moving averages are on the side of the bears. I said, what you need to do look at first is the resistance on the way up. Once we get through that resistance, that blue five crosses back over that red 13, then we can look at a pullback to buy for support to continue the move up. But until we can get through some of this resistance, no, no, I, I don't feel comfortable with you buying the stock. Symmetry is great for trade setups. When it's violated, it can also provide information that can help your trading in another way. When symmetry is violated, if symmetry is broken, it will often lead to a deeper correction and many times indicates a change in trend, okay? This is coffee. Somebody had me run coffee recently. And, um, or it wasn't, it wasn't actually recently. It was, uh, it was a while back. They had me run it recently to uh, look at the, the resistance on the way up. But they were wanting to be a buyer. And they were wanting to be a buyer, I think, after it bounced up here, if I remember correctly. And what I told them was, from the low of the 11th of January, okay, this may be a little confusing, so I'm going to try to try to make it make sense. From the low of the 11th of January to the high of the 18th of April, okay, so from this low 
to this high, we are looking at that swing before the current swing. Okay, we went through the symmetry of that swing up. Okay, what I mean by that is these three blue lines represent the swings on the way up to this high of the 18th of April. And we went through, when we went through the symmetry of those swings, I said, I'm not comfortable with you making a buy here because this chart to me looks like it's going to make a deeper downside correction. Symmetry helps you to say, hey, we've gone through the previous swings that were the upswing that kept this bullish. So now it could make a much deeper downside correction or at least retest the low from the 11th of January. Okay, and I know this might sound a little confusing. Uh, if so, let me know. I'm happy to explain it again. But I also am happy to explain this in our room at Elliott Wave Trader. As far as uh, uranium is concerned, same thing. Somebody was interested in getting bullish. I told them if we go through these symmetrical projections, it will make a deeper downside correction. And look, it took out that low from the 18th of October. See this swing up from I mean, from the 13th of October, from the 13th of October up to the 2nd of February. Okay. These are all the bullish swings, right? And when we came down and started going through those, it's not looking good anymore. So this is when symmetry is violated and tells you get out. Things do not look good here. And we could even take out that previous low. Now, that was for bullish trend. This is for a bear, for what was a bearish trend, and you had resistance, okay? NFE had that swing up, and then it started coming down. Well, when it had that low on the 6th of July, I said, you know what? We've got to get through one, two, three pieces of resistance, swings of resistance, before I feel better about this trade. And so what happened? We got through one, two, three. Then at this next high, we could run a pullback. I'd feel more comfortable about it because now we're through the bearish resistance to take the move, continue the move up to the 5th of September high. Okay. That's how we do the work. And I'll show you in just a minute on some of my lower time frame charts what I what I show you in the room. Um, and keep calm and let's recap. Symmetry can be used to determine support resistance and projections where the market may turn okay those are the ones i was telling you about when we're past the extensions or when it's broken it may indicate a deeper downside correction and those are the ones i just uh, went over i'm here to help you use fibonacci analysis as part of your trading plan uh, i do look forward to seeing you in the fibonacci market and stock it's room and elliott wave trader um, i am going to continue this on because i do have some extra time and uh, let me, let's see, I think what I will do is um, pull, let's see, pull up, let's see, some of my other um, charts I have here, so we can kind of talk about, so this is, <laughs> just to let you know, this is the timing I did today live in the room, this is 30 minute timing, I'm saying that this is timing for a high into resistance that's on the 120 minute chart. Um, I'll show, oh, hold on, I'll show you that real quick. So this is what I do. This is a great example of exactly what happens in the room. Uh, okay. We're still yeah. seeing the uh, Fibonacci princess slide. Oh, you are. I'm so, yeah. I'm so sorry. Thank you for letting me know. Um, let's see if I can. Okay, let me. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. I've got things on the wrong screen here. Here we go. Is that better? Uh, it's not I'm, sharing yet. I'm going to stop. Sh can I stop? Oh, well, no. Is it? Yeah, yeah you, you stopped sharing. I so did. Okay, fantastic. You, yeah, you'll That's have to reshare. That's a good thing. I want to share this other. Uh, um, share screen. Okay, here we go. All right, it's um, slow. This is, okay, yeah, now I see it. Okay, thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So, um, what happened in the room live this morning, the room that I, that Carolyn and I have, um, I actually uh, do the live charts until 1 p.m. Eastern. I put them up around 
between 7 and 7.30 a.m. Eastern. So you actually have ES and NQ live charts in front of you. I'm not sure how this will, uh, mind. oh yeah, it did match. Okay, this is what you see in our room live. Okay, these are actually my live charts from today. You can see the moving numbers yeah. moving. Uh, yeah, now we're seeing, looks like your desktop uh, mountains. Oh, why is it doing that? It's not letting me move stuff over, I guess. Hmm, that's mm. odd. I didn't know that. Okay, all right. Can you see that now? Okay, yeah. Now okay. it's showing the charts again. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, on ES 120-minute chart, this is where I gave timing for a low and support this morning. Okay, so since that timing for a low and that support, let's see, 44.34, 44.60, that's 26 points. Um, not a huge move, but uh, a nice move there in the ES, right? I mean, it's a huge move if you're trading futures. <laughs> so, and you can also use ES to trade SPX and SPY, right? You can do that. But I gave timing for a low. That's the light gray lines you see. And I don't want you to get confused by looking at this because I will explain it to you if you decide to come in the room. So the timing is this histogram box you see at the bottom for a low that comes together with the price support. Now the eight is below the 34. So I would call this a counter trend trade. But, um, you know, I had plenty of people in my room this morning at the open when they saw us come into that nice blister of support, they used that as their risk and bought with that timing for a low. Okay. Now what you see on this 10 minute chart here is you see where I have resistance on the way up. And I also gave another area that you could buy. Okay. So there's another buy area at 44, 47 to 48. If you missed that initial buy at 44, 30 to 35. So on um, on uh, the intraday charts, it's eight and thirty four exponential moving averages. Okay, so I'll write that down real quick. Intraday charts, eight thirty four exponential moving average. Okay, but on the daily charts. It's uh, 5 and 13 EMA and 50 and 200 SMA. So the blue and red represent different numbers on intraday versus daily. That's a, a point of confusion that we have a lot, that a lot of people get. Um, so, uh, but you were asking me, did in, in, I didn't know that you can't, I don't know why when I'm moving one thing from this screen to another, it's messing up the share. But um, I, if it does, again, I do apologize, but I want to be able to show you my other dynamic trader screen so that um, I can show you uh, what happened. Let's see, on here yesterday, I can show you what happened on this ES120 minute chart because it was live. I took that low to this high. Let's see, wait. It was an exact hit, so I've got to find. Maybe that was on. Yeah, I had it. That low to this high to this low. Let's see, it could have been a couple of different ones. Yeah. We failed. But yeah, that was about it. We failed at that 44.71 and to make the de deeper downside correction, okay? I had timing uh, for a high and resistance against that, against that, and we failed. Now, um, the thing that does get confusing for people is that you can have timing for a high and resistance, and then we fail, and then we get timing for a, a low and support, and then we can bounce, okay? So, um, you know, you have to be nimble and you have to be quick when we are stuck so close between zones, right? We're stuck between support and resistance right now. And, and honestly, those are my least favorite kinds of trades. 
but if you are a day trader, um, you know, right now you're really going to love this work. Um, for swing trading, it's fine too, but you just really need to pay attention to what your risk is. Um, my husband uses it for swing trading um, also and day trading, but uh, we are just, you know, kind of in that market right now where we're stuck between support and resistance. So, you know, I don't, I don't know about holding things overnight until we get into a better pattern. Um, okay. So, you know, my favorite type of setups, I think they are for everybody is when, you know, we, uh, we come down into support, we hit it, we bounce and we get to, towards those targets and then we pull back again and reset the whole thing again. Right. But when you're stuck so close between support and resistance, uh, you really need to pay attention to your risk and to what's going on in the market. I mean, this market has been tried to kind of tough to trade for, a, for a while now. Um, but you know, that's why I think that using these kind of tools is really, really, really important. Uh, let's see. I feel like I had some other questions here. Um, are these, can you, can I run symmetry on those charts? Yes, absolutely. I can. Um, if I try to move this, oh, and here we, we do keep Tesla, Amazon, Apple, and NVIDIA 30 minute charts live. Uh, also. And, uh, like I said, we will share, we do share charts in the room. And I do take chart requests a couple days a week. I'm going to move this dynamic trader screen back over, but I'm not sure what it's going to do to the share. So let me uh, make this chat small again. Did it mess up the share again or are we good? Doesn't look like it did it this time. Can y'all see the dynamic trader screen that's got one chart on it? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fantastic. Okay. I don't know why it messed it up last time I did it, but it sure did. Okay, so yeah, I can look at some requests. If anybody else has got requests, let me know too. I'll go ahead and look at RCL first. Yeah, this is this is great. I like it. Um, let me look at, uh, yeah, I saw you say AMD earlier. I've actually got AMD on another workspace. I want to look at the moving averages for this before I uh, before I make a, a decision about how I really feel about it. <laughs> Ugh, geez. I, I like that it's having such a nice pullback, but I don't like where the moving averages are because you still are above the 200, so you can make a case for the bulls. But you're below the 50, and the 5 is below the 13. So this would be a great case for um, definitely using Fibonacci work to define your risk because um, – you know, that this could make a much deeper downside correction with those moving averages looking that way. And a lot of times I do have to check my highs and lows to make sure I'm grabbing the right ones. See, we're already through the symmetry of that swing up. So, um, so far it's not looking great. Um, I can look at some of these swings back here, though. The swing before the swing. And people ask all the time, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Carolyn will tell you, and I now know to say this also, this work is an art. It is not a science, okay? So it is very uh, op open to, you know, oh, well, why did she do it this way? Why did she do it that way? But most of the time, Carolyn and I are going to have the same thing, but um. And there's a lot of nuances too. Like, I don't know if you saw what I just did, but not only did I look at those larger swings from back there to try to get symmetry from the more recent high, okay? But since it's so below the market, I'm gonna look and see what's going on inside of this swing also. So I just looked at the symmetry of this swing from, I gotta actually make sure that more recent high. Hold on, I gotta get the right high, there we go. So this swing, which the high and the low happen to be on the same day, from there gives us symmetrical support at 94.18. Now I'm going to look at an extension. I was telling you about this earlier. I do retracements and extensions. I want it to all overlap and look nice and pretty, give me nice setup zones. I just didn't go over extensions and retracements today because I had already seen that there were a lot, a lot of other people going over them. But uh, I can uh, definitely go over that with you in the room if you have more questions. 
Uh, thanks, Kent. This is Dynamic Trader. It is specifically built to do Fibonacci work. It does not do anything else. It is not a trading platform. Um, and yes, I have used Fibonacci work on tra other trading platforms and I my eyes get just confused. I just can't even do it anymore. <laughs> so I'm very thankful for Dynamic Trader. Bob Miner owns it. Um, and uh, it is a fantastic tool. Now, you could ask yourself, hey, why don't I get Dynamic Trader and use it myself? You can totally do that. But the data that you have to buy from eSignal to keep your your uh, your charts live is um, a little pricey. And Dynamic Trader is a little pricey too. But if you are serious about learning how to do your own FIB walk, uh, work and doing it yourself. I could not recommend it more. It's a fantastic platform. Okay, so I've got a nice setup zone for you here on um, on RCL. I would definitely say to you if it goes through that 98, 92.48, you need to get out. Look, your next support's not even till, down till 87. Um, I would just be really careful. Actually, I'm going to run you some resistance on the way up too so you can see what you need to get through in order to... Uh, to feel more confident about getting bullish here. This is going to be way above the market, that one is, but let's just do it here. All right. So this is what you're looking at here. You are going to have a bit of an uphill battle. Of course you are because uh, this has been going down for a while, so. And I don't, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of the fact that it's failing at that 236. A lot of times if something wants to keep going down, it fails at 236s or 382s. So, um, I mean, assuming that you're bullish on it. If you're bearish on it, you know, your, your setup zone is that 98, 99 area. But, I mean, you'd be so close to that support. Like I said, these are my least favorite ty types of setups. If you have to make a decision or you're already in the trade, you know, that's different. But um, I, if I'm trying to get into something new, uh, this this would not be something that I would pick personally. Please answer your request. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me, did I have... Uh, ES. Okay, let's see. ES, 24th of August. Yes, I will answer your question real quick. Let me uh, put RCL in the chat here. Can I put it in there? Can I drop things in there? I cannot drop things in there. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm about to answer it. Um, I can't drop that RCL in there. So if you could make a screenshot of it, please. Uh, you're welcome. No problem. I'm sorry I didn't answer your, your question specifically. Um, 24th of August. Oh, oh, okay. Yep, I see what you're talking about. 24th of August down uh, projected. This was about looks symmetrical. Yep, it is. It sure is. Good job. Yes, that is the setup zone on ES Daily. It is 44.25. To about 28, that's that symmetry, 100%. Awesome job seeing that. Um, yes, that is part of what I've got here on the setup. It is, uh, I need to type it out because we're getting so close, to 28. 44, 25, 28. What I do like about that setup is it includes a 618 from this more recent. Not only does it include symmetry, but it can includes a 618 from this low of the 18th of August to this high on the 1st of September. So not only we do have do we have symmetry, we have a 618 also. So I'm a big fan. I hope that that uh, answers your question. Great job. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I will move over to AMD real quick. Uh, let's see if I can remember which workspace I have it on. I'm pretty sure I have it on this one. I have a lot of workspaces, as you just saw. 
I run a lot, hundreds and hundreds of charts. Let's see, what time is it? Got, got about 10 more minutes, so we'll probably be able to get to those other two chart requests too, that uh, MEXS and BRZU. I have not um, heard of those before. There's AMD. Okay, here, so here's what's going on on AMD. I'm glad I opened this so that I didn't have to rerun it. <laughs> We're stuck between support and resistance, okay? This is a support cluster that I have recently given someone because it was a chart request in the room, all right? And you are welcome to take a screenshot of this. Um, now I am going to just run the retracement pullback there, okay? And uh, I think that symmetry is just going to be a little bit, it might extend, yeah, 99.76. If that high is in place, that would be your setup zone if we come down to retest it, okay? Now, if you're already in AMD and you want to add contracts based on these retracements, you can do that. I do that. As far as the Fibonacci queen is considered, that is not part of what she suggests. That is part of my personal trading plan, okay? So if I'm in a trade, say I bought on the 25th of August, and I came up here to this resistance and we failed and we're pulling back to the 618 or the 786, I would by themselves use those as risk to add more contracts to continue the move up. Now, AMD, I'm going to reload the uh, moving averages just to make sure they're right. They are because sometimes they get weird. We are above the 200 and the blue five is above the red 13. So three of the moving averages are on the side of the bulls on AMD, even though it's had, you know, a nice little pullback there. We're still below the 50, and we failed from that resistance, which, you know, uh, but we could fail from that resistance and pull back to one of these retracements and continue the move up. Okay, you just need to keep a close eye on it. Um, looks like I have a couple more minutes here, so I am going to run that MEXX. That's something I clearly have never run before. <laughs> um, this has a lot of broken data on it, so this is not something that I would uh, want to really trust the work. Um, but I can see some symmetry here. So assuming that the highs and lows are correct, I could give you a quick uh, symmetrical setup here on MEXX. Happy to. So the first thing, and y'all, I do this very quickly. Um, so I'm going to actually look at symmetry from the more recent high. This is another nuance that unless you've been doing this for a while, you don't really understand to do it this way. But I can also run from the more recent high, this more recent high. I don't have to use this high, okay? So that's what I'm doing since I immediately, when I looked at this chart, this was something that I loved when I was learning this work, is that apparently not everybody sees this stuff so quickly like I do. And the second I look at this chart, I see that all three of these swings are similar. And so that's why I wanted to run it from this more recent high, because one, two, three. So there gives you a little setup zone there. Um, I'm going to erase these real quick just so I can see a little bit better here and then let's see if we have a couple of retracements that are overlapping and let's see any extensions from that nope all right so I think that is a a nice little setup zone you've got there I let me see I mean this data is so broken it I don't know if I'd want to use all that way back there. I guess I could try, but it's not even big enough anyway. It's about the same. That one's from that overall high. So I'd say you have a nice little setup zone here. I would I would go anywhere from 2343 to about 2495. Uh, let's look at whoops, let's look at the moving averages here. Let's see what we've got. All the moving averages are on the side of the bears. So any buy here is going to be counter trend. But your risk is defined. 
So that's the good news. And sometimes there's these companies we just are like, okay, this is what I know fundamentally. So, you know, I, now I've got my technical analysis. Now I'm ready to buy or sell. Let's see, five more minutes. Okay, I'll do that BRZU real quick and then I will be out of here. Does anybody else have any quick questions before I go? Again, my name is Tammy Marshall. I would love to have you join us in our room at elliotwavetrader.net. Can you share that link for me, please, David? I think I sent it to you earlier, or I could either just type it in here myself. Yep, thank you. Um, let's see if we can get this to load real quick. Yeah, this is going to be definitely a uh, side of the bears chart. You're still above the 200, so you can make a case for the bulls if you want to get bullish here. All right, we are not quite through that, so that's a good sign. But I'll tell you, um, you start getting below that 200, and I'd, I'd get a little bit nervous. Got this swing inside this one. Ooh, we are right on top of that. Okay, let me see this swing just before here. Yep, well, there you go. There's the head. Okay, so this is going to be some really nice defined risk here. I want to see something real quick. Yep, if you go through that 7049, look out below. That 7049 is where you need to say, okay, we're done here. Time to find a different trade. This did not work. Because that 7049 is the symmetry of that swing down, okay? If you break that, you break that symmetry of the swing down. So setup zone, I mean, I don't know what this trade's like. I'm not familiar with this stock at all. But I mean, never even heard of it, I don't think. But um, but uh, that doesn't mean anything, obviously. But, um, but I will tell you that, uh, you know, the the setup zone, if you can risk that full setup zone, you could do 70, 41 to 75, 45. But I, I, like I said, I don't know how, to tra how it trades. So there is, whoops. There is that last level, the other ones you can clearly see. Just go ahead and take your uh, screenshot there. I'll give you that low of the day too. And um, you'll have all your information. All right, guys, I will go ahead and get out of here. I uh, didn't know that I'd be able to take up an hour, but it looks like I did. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate all of you joining me. Uh, like I said, if you've got any questions, please be sure to let me know. Um, I am on Twitter at trader tammy one if you want to follow me i do put charts on there uh, so and um, i'm the fibonacci princess <laughs>